Welcome back to our KDP series. In the last session, we dove into formatting your manuscript for KDP. No, I'm sorry, I think I missed that one. It's one of the most important steps in making sure your book gets approved and looks professional when it's printed. But full disclosure, I made a mistake. Yep, even after all the hours I've spent formatting books, I still mess up. And I love sharing my mistakes with you because I truly believe they're the best way to learn. Oh, that's refreshing. Let me show you exactly what went wrong and how to fix it so you can avoid this same little headache. So let's talk about the mistake I made. If you'll recall, I in the last video, we went through and filled out all the details that are needed for your KDP upload. And I got my little description here through my chat GPT help. And then down here, I got my keyword suggestions from BookBolt here when I typed in large print word search. This is what came up. And so this is where I identified the most uh, the highest search keywords in what I'm going to use. So that's what I put in there. I was it's six by nine. If you'll remember in BookBolt, the original one that I made, I always do no bleed, which means that right here at the end, that's the trim line where I expect the book to be trimmed. I'm not allowing for extra space to run over for the bleed. So here I chose no bleed because that's what I had set my book up for. Then when I uploaded the manuscript and the cover, which I'm going to go over covers in a second, let me show you what happened. So as you can see, because I didn't accommodate for that bleed, it's showing that the picture is going beyond the edge and I basically have to reformat it. So let me show you what I did. Selected, had to go back and change and select it to bleed PDF only. See, and that's all that it took to fix that. I just needed to change it to include that extra length, that extra little bit for a bleed. And then it was fine. But I like the way it looks. And I'm going to click approve. Now, let's talk how much it's going to sell for. Minimum $5.69. I really would prefer to keep it low. So I'm going to say here $6.95. Oops. 695. So I'm going to make about 76 cents. I like to make I don't know, but this is a smaller book, so I'm okay keeping it that. If it were a thicker book and had more word searches, I would want to make about 50 cents more. And I'm going to click publish my paperback. Mistakes aren't a big deal as long as we learn from them. And now that you've got that sorted out, let's move on to the fun part, creating eye-catching book covers. Your book cover is your first impression. It's what stops people in their tracks while they're scrolling through endless book listings. And trust me, a great cover can be the difference between someone clicking buy now or passing on your book altogether. But don't worry, creating a professional looking cover isn't as hard as it might seem. I'm going to walk you through the key elements of a great cover and show you exactly how I create mine. Let's talk about why your cover matters so much. Imagine you're walking through a bookstore or scrolling on Amazon. What makes you pick up or click on a book? Nine out of 10 times, it's the cover. We all know the old saying, don't judge a book by its cover, but that's our reality. So let's make a cover worth judging. A well-designed cover not only grabs attention, but also tells your potential reader what your book is about. It sets the tone, communicates the genre, and, most importantly, it builds trust that your book is worth their time and their money. Now, let's break down the key elements of a great book cover. First, we need to understand your niche. Research is your best friend here. Look at best-selling books in your niche or genre. What colors, fonts, and imagery do they use? A children's book cover will look wildly different from a thriller. The goal is to fit your niche while still standing out. High quality imagery is also important. Avoid blurry or generic images. Readers can spot low effort from a mile away. Instead, use tools like Kittle to create or at least start designing your cover. Kittle offers pre-made templates that are professional and easy to customize. Readable fonts and typography are also important. Your title needs to be clear and easy to read, even as a thumbnail. Avoid overly decorative fonts and focus on simplicity. 
Color balance. Colors evoke emotion. Bright, playful colors work for a children's book, while dark, moody tones suit mystery or thrillers. Choose a palette that aligns with your book's tone. And proper aligning and spacing needs to be addressed. A cluttered cover can confuse readers. Keep your design clean and balanced, leaving enough white space for the elements to breathe. And don't forget, I've got all of this written down for you on my website at reneeclancy.com. And I ask that if you're finding this information helpful, please subscribe. Let's talk about tools. When I'm creating book covers, I love starting with Kittle. It's a fantastic tool because it offers pre-made templates you can customize. And it also gives you the rights to publish any designs you create on the platform, something Canva doesn't guarantee. You can start with a template, tweak it to fit your book's theme, and have a polished cover in no time. If you're on a tighter budget, Canva is a good free option, but remember to check their licensing rules if you're planning to sell your book commercially. I just go to their templates and I typed in book covers, and I think these are a really great place to start. Take what's here and then change the text, maybe add a picture or a font that you prefer. But by starting here, you know, basically it's been designed by a professional. Obviously, they've got some magazine covers in here, um, other options, more you know, simple options. But if you see something like, let's say like this, like I hate that little logo right there, but I say I like the text in the font, this I could select and just change that part and add a different icon or something that I wanted right there. Let me show you one that I think this one I think is a little bit too busy. So is this one. I think that's kind of busy. If you look at it, let's open up that one. It really might be okay for maybe a sci-fi or a romance book, but remember this has to be seen as a thumbnail. So if I go like this and that's all someone has to look at when they're scrolling on their phone. I think that's too much. It's a little too busy. That's why I would prefer something with just a cleaner style. If you would prefer something like that, this might even be good with a bold font. For a kid's cover, this is great. And this one actually gives you, you know, the front and the back and the spine. That's why I think there are a lot of great options here in Kittle. Again, this is where I start and then I go from there. Let me show you about the cover that I selected. I typed in book covers, and as I was searching, I came across the cover of a planner right here. I just liked how bold it was. I could definitely manipulate it. So here, when I opened it up, um, I wanted it, you know, like I said, start with something and then change it according to what you would like. I took this center part and I put it on a larger piece of paper. And then when I uploaded it to BookBolt, I still really liked that. I liked that yellow color. And I put this little words note thing on there. And I wanted a, see there's the notes thing. I wanted that word search words to be on top to make it look like a word search. Copied one of the word searches, pasted it onto here, and then just made it bigger. I made the background yellow. See, that's where I could change the color. I really liked that yellow. I added the word search on top. This was that little words note part. I changed the text to the little book of little words, word searches. And then I put my examples on the back. I like a couple of examples as always. And that's what, how I got my cover. Again, I started, I always start with what BookBolt has, kind of get inspiration take what they have, and then adjust it a little bit to fit what I want. And that's how I do my process for covers. Now it's your turn. For this week's assignment, research your niche and find three examples of best-selling book covers that resonate with you and the audience. Create a draft of your own book cover using either Kittle or Canva. Don't worry about perfection. This is all about practice. The more you experiment, then the better your covers will get. Creating a book cover can be one of the most rewarding parts of self-publishing. It's where your vision will come to life. Remember, your cover is your book's first impression, so make it a good one. And don't stress about getting it perfect the first time. Like I showed you earlier, even I make mistakes. 
a lot of them. In our next session, we'll be talking about crafting irresistible book descriptions that sell. You won't want to miss it. See you then.